Hello, I'd like to welcome you to Allegiance presentation on Keen Schematics. My name is Gordon Malcheski, and I'm a senior product trainer for Schlage under the Allegiance umbrella. I'm a certified professional locksmith. I've been doing that for over 40 years. I'm also a certified fire door and life safety inspector and a certified physical security professional. I am based in Roanoke, Virginia. So I want to welcome you all to today's presentation on Keying Schematics. I appreciate you taking time to learn a little bit more about Keying Schematics. So we're going to jump right into our topics for today's presentation. So we're going to be talking about what exactly is a Keying Schematic. We're going to take a look at a variety of different types of Keying Schematics so you get an idea of how they are labeled and how they are laid out. We're going to talk about key symbols. Now, key symbols are a series of letters or numbers that are used to label the key schematic. They're also used to label the keys. So we're going to be talking about how to apply those uh, symbols to the keys and the schematic. Then we'll be talking about some special situations. For example, if you have a key or a cylinder rather that is just operated by the master key only, it's not operated by any individual keys. Or maybe a key that is operated by the grand master key but not operated by a building master. We're going to talk about some of those special keying situations, see how you handle those, how you lay those out, and how you label them. All right, so when it comes to uh, key schematics, uh, when we are laying them out or formulating them, we have to take a look at how, the, how people flow, how employees flow through a building, uh, what they need access to, where they go, what keys operate, what doors. So we need to take all of that into consideration when we are laying it out. We also have to know how many doors there are, how many different departments there are in the building, if there are multiple buildings. We need to get an idea of the organizational chart itself to give us some ideas on how to set up or lay out the system. So most of you are probably familiar with an organizational chart. Uh, so we can see there is a hierarchy associated with an organizational chart. So we've got the boss at the top of the organization. Then the next level down, you might have uh, managers or supervisors. And then at the base of the pyramid would be the individual employees. So this is the same layout that we're going to be using for a key schematic. So when we're dealing with a key schematic, one of the first thing we're going to have to determine is how many levels are there going to be in that schematic. So here we have an example of a simple two-level system. And in that two-level system, we are going to label the keys at the base. They're going to be labeled as part of level one. So that's at the very base. And then above that is going to be level two. So this is an example of a simple two-level system where there's two major groupings of keys in use. Now here we have an example of a three-level system. This should be pretty obvious to you. So we're going to have the same uh, organization or same layout. So we start at the base. Once again, that would be known as level one. Above that would be level two. And above that would be level three. So that all is pretty self-evident, uh, not too complicated uh, as far as laying that out is concerned. Now here we have an example of a four-level system. So now we're getting a little bit more complex. We're getting into the uh, larger uh, buildings or facilities. This might be a, a large office building or maybe a small community hospital or a, a small uh, community college, for example, might use a four-level system. Uh, these are relatively common, probably uh, just a little bit less common than three-level systems. But we once again use the same levels over again. So we have level one at the base, then level two going up towards the top level three, and then the one at the very top is level four. So that's how we decide on the levels. The levels are assigned based on the types of keys that are being used in the building. All right, now when it comes to naming the keys for those various levels, uh, in a two-level system, the keys at the base are going to be known as the change keys. Now, it's a little bit of a confusing term. Nothing is actually changing in the system. So, for example, those keys are not changing out interchangeable cores. Those are called control keys. A change key is simply the lowest level operating key in a master key system, and the change key will typically operate one door. Now, above that would be the master key. Now, in this case, in a two-level system, the master key would typically operate all the doors in the building. Moving over to our three-level system, you can see that we still reuse the same names for the change key, the keys at the very bottom, and working the individual doors. The master keys, now this time the master keys will probably open a group of doors for, let's say, a department 
or they may open all the doors on a particular floor. So that would be a floor master. Maybe you have cleaning crews. Uh, one crew cleans the first floor and another crew cleans the second floor. So you would give them two different master keys. The building owner, however, would get a grand master key or maybe security or maintenance personnel. They would have a grand master key that fit both floors of the building or actually all the doors in the building. Grand master key would be something that would also be assigned to the fire department or be kept in a keykeeper box located on the front of the building. So the fire department has access to all the doors in the building in the event of a fire or an emergency. So going on to a four level system, we're going to reuse everything that we use so far, change keys at the base, master keys above that, fitting a group of cylinders, a floor or a department. Grand master key might fit an individual building. So if you have multiple buildings, you might have a different grand master key for each building. And then the great grand master key would fit everything on the campus or everything that is assigned to the facility. So great grand master key would be at the top of a four level system. All right, so here we have a three level system. Now we're gonna get a little more granular. We're going to get into the letters and numbers that we use to assign. These are called key symbols, and this is all part of something called standard key coding. It is an industry standard for labeling the keys in a master key system. It is highly recommend that you use this whenever setting up a new master key system because it is so universal, it is well laid out, it is logical, it shows a good flow or hierarchy of the keys in a master key system. So in a three level system, the grand master key is a single letter. So once again, this three level system, the grand master key is a single letter. The master keys use two letters, the first letter being the key used for the grand master. Then the second key or the second letter in each master key is simply sequential according to the alphabet. So the first master key is AA because A is the first letter of the alphabet. Second master key is AB because B is the second letter of the alphabet. So you can see there's, there's good logic uh, behind the labeling of these. Now, when we get to the uh, change keys, we do something a little bit different. But when it comes to the master keys, we're going to avoid a couple of letters. We're going to avoid the letters I and O in that uh, master key lettered pair. And that's because the I and the O can be mistaken for numbers. I could be mistaken for a one. O could be mistaken for a zero. And this was uh, more common uh, back in the days when we did a lot of transmissions using faxes. Sometimes those were a little bit difficult to read. So most manufacturers will avoid using the letters I and O when labeling the master keys. Now, when it comes to the change keys, the change keys all start with the master key letter pair that the uh, master key has that is directly above it. So for example, we have AA1, that's an indication that it is the first change key under the AA master. Going to the other side, we see a change key labeled AB2, that's an indication it's the second change key under the AB master. So change keys are gonna have the master key letter pair followed by a number. Now in a two level system, the master key is still double letters and they're both the same, but the change keys now have the uh, change key numbers that come in front of the letters. So if it's a two level system, the change key numbers come in front of the master key letters rather than behind them. That's to indicate that there is no higher level key. It's an indication that there's only two levels, a master key and a change key level. So this you might find an assignment for a small retail store or maybe a very small apartment where there's not a lot of doors, a very simple system, just two levels where we would find the change keys with the numbers before the letters. Okay, now in a four level system, uh, the great grand master key is gonna be labeled simply GGM, great grand master. Now the grand masters are going to reuse, so we're gonna see we're gonna reuse the letters that we used in the three level system. So remember in a three level system, we had a single letter A for the grand master key. Well, we're simply going to duplicate that on the other side, and that grand master key is gonna be labeled with a single letter B, once again, following the letters in the alphabet. Then we come down to the master keys. They still use double letters. The first letter is going to be the letter found in the grand master key. So you can see that right here. So these two master keys are going to start with the grand master letter A. 
because that's what they come under. That's what they are related to. On this side, we have the grand master key B. So all the master keys under that grand will start with that same letter B. And then we simply, once again, use the letters of the alphabet for the sequential labeling of the master. So the first master key under the A grand would be AA. The second master key under the A grand would be AB. And you can see that we're going to repeat that with the chain or the master keys under the B grandmaster. Then when it comes to the change keys, those are going to work the same way. We use the master key letter pair, AA in this case, followed by a number. Over on this side, we've got some change keys under the BA master. So they, those change keys would all start with BA followed by sequential numbering. All right, so let's do a little bit of a review. Let's see if we can figure out where the key symbols would go. So you've got some numbers on some empty squares or ovals or circles. Uh, so we're gonna try and figure out where that key, key symbol would appear. So our first key symbol, we wanna figure out where the A, B would go. Does it go in spot one, two, three, four, or five? So if we look at that, A, B tells us double letters, that's some type of master key. So where do you think that might go? Okay, if you said space number two, you would be correct because this is the AA master. This would be the AB master. Okay, next uh, symbol we wanna take a look at is AA2. So we've got a pair of letters followed by a number. So where do you think that would go? One, two, three, four, or five. Okay, if you selected uh, uh, section or area number three, you would be correct. So that's uh, AA would be the master here. This would be AA1, this would be AA2. Okay, let's try another one here. A1, now this is one we have not discussed yet. So this is a little bit of a challenge here. So this is a single letter with a number following it. All right, and the single letter we know refers to the grand master key. So if we look at this chart over to the side here where we see number five, that's where it would go. If we follow the lines up, you can see that there is no uh, master key at this particular level. So this key, this space right here is actually the A1. So it indicates that it's the first change key, first change key under the A grand master. You'll notice that it does not have a pair of letters. So that's our indication that it is not associated with a master key. All right, so from key symbols, we can determine uh, quite a bit of information if we're using standard key coding. So here we have an example. We have a symbol that is labeled BA4. So this is something that would be stamped on the key. So we pick up the key trying to figure out what it is under or what it is associated with or related to. Uh, for the grandmaster key, we can tell that is the first letter in that grouping. B would be the grandmaster key. So we can tell that by this key symbol. And this key symbol, by the way, is what would be stamped on the individual change key. Then if we ask ourselves, well, what master is this change key related to? The answer would be BA, uh, BA would be the master key that this comes under. Remember, master keys are always double letters. So BA would be the master that this change key comes under, and B would be the grandmaster that this key is associated with. All right, so now we want to take a look at a building. So we have a single floor building. Uh, there's a CPA for, uh, firm, and we've got five individual rooms. Each room is going to have its own operating key, its own change key, and there's going to be one key that opens all the doors. So looking at this, how many levels of keying do you think we would have for this system? Would we have two levels, three levels, or four levels based on this particular layout of the building, the doors? So what do you think? Okay, so if you said two level, you would be correct. We just need a very simple two level system, one master key that fits all the doors, and then change keys that operate the individual offices. So a simple two level system would suffice for this type of layout. Next one we want to consider is a uh, two floors. Now there are different businesses on each floor. Uh, once again, each door is going to have its own operating key and each business will have a master key that fits all the doors on their floor. 
and then the landlord that owns the building wants one key that operates everything. There's also going to be a, a, a door there, a room, where only the landlord and the cleaning crew gets in. Right. So once again, we've got two floors, two different businesses. Each door has its own operating key. Each floor has a key that fits all the doors just on that floor. And then we have one key that fits everything in the building. So if you were laying out this system, how many levels do you think you would specify? Two levels, three levels, or four levels? All right, if you came up with a three level system, you would be correct. So we're gonna have change key level, would be level one, that would fit the individual doors. Level two would be the master keys, those would be the floor masters, one for each business. And then the third level would be the grand master key that goes to the building owner. So a simple three level system would take care of this uh, scenario. All right, so we covered some of the basics, some of the basic operation. And, and generally when we say the basic or the standard operation, it would typically be where the change key operates a door, a master key and a grandmaster in a three level system. So you typically would have all three of those keys operating a cylinder in a three level system, for example, but there are some exceptions to that. All right, and uh, some of those exceptions come in the form of something called cross keying. Cross keying is where you have additional keys operating a cylinder that you would not normally expect. So in this particular case, we want not only the individual change key to work, the master key and a grandmaster, we also want some additional keys to work. And the door that we're concerned with is right here, this uh, door to the reception area. It is currently operated by a uh, change key AA1. Now, if you follow along, you can see that folks that are in these two offices here, they need to get through the receptionist door in order to get to their office. So those office holders want to only carry one key key that will work in their office and a key that will work in that outer receptionist door. So we're going to cross key the reception door so that it operates not only by AA1, it'll also be operated by AA2, which is a key for this office, and change key AA3, which operates the other office. So this is known as cross keying when there is a primary change key for the cross keyed cylinder. So this is the cross keyed cylinder. The primary key is AA1. Uh, we want those additional change keys to operate. All right, so this is what it would look like. We're gonna take AA2 and AA3. We're gonna cross it over into AA1. So that cylinder is gonna be cross keyed. So that particular cylinder, when we designate it on our paperwork, we're gonna uh, indicate the door to the reception area, or the cylinder to the reception area is going to be specified as XAA1. X indicates that that cylinder is cross keyed. And then after that, we put operated by, and then we list all the keys that we want to operate that particular door. So we're using the change key label for that uh, receptionist store AA1. We're using that as kind of a, a special label. Uh, that's a special keying situation. When we put an X in front of it, XAA1 is no longer the key. XAA1 is the special keying situation, the special or first cross keying situation. So XAA1 is going to be operated by the AA2 change key, AA3, the AA master, and the A grand. All those keys will work in addition to the AA1 change key. So that's uh, known as cross keying, and that would be a reasonable request to cross keying. Cross keying is typically not a good idea. It does make the system less secure. It makes it more complex. Uh, the cylinder is more vulnerable to uh, malfunction or picking. So we generally want to avoid cross keying, and we never want to do that in an exterior door. An interior door such as this, where there are just a couple of extra keys that we want to operate, is generally more acceptable. Now here we have an example of cross keying when there is no primary change key for the cylinder that is being cross keyed. So here we have an example of some offices. Now these are inside uh, the building. So we've got offices that are operated by change keys AA1 all the way up to AA6. So each office has its own individual change key. Each office is operated by a master key. And we've got this exterior door that is cross keyed so that all of the office keys operate 
the entrance to the office suite. Now, this is not an exterior door. This is a department within a building. So the entrance to the office suite um, is going to be operated by all the individual operating keys. So uh, the office key AA1, change key here, will work that entry door. So will AA2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 will all operate the entry to the office suite. So everything works fine until they hire a summer intern. That summer intern arrives earlier before the other office holders, and that intern needs to get in. Well, we don't have a specific key for that uh, entry door to the office suite. The individual office keys will work, and the master key or grandmaster key will work, but we don't want to give the intern any of those keys. So we're kind of stuck here. Uh, so unless we found one of the office holders that was allow the uh, intern to use their office key, we're kind of stuck. We, there's no key to give that intern. What we should have done is we should have uh, cut a, set a separate key to operate that entry door, which would be AA7. So this one, uh, currently the way it's set up is specified as X1X. You'll notice there's an X in front of the cross king number and an X after it. That's an indicate that, that it is not an actual key. There's no change key within that symbol. It's simply indicating a special cross king situation. If you had another special cross king situation, that would be labeled X2X and then X3X. Once again, they are not keys. They are just labels for special keying situations. At any rate, the way this is set up right now, we would specify it as X1X operated by AA1 through AA6, the AA master and the A grand. So that's the way we would specify a entry door, an interior entry door. Remember, we don't want to cross key exterior doors because that's part of the perimeter security. So we have to specify all the keys that will operate in that cylinder. So that's an example of cross keying when there is no primary key assigned to that door. All right, so let's take a look at what we have here for the differences. So on the left was cross keying with a primary change key, and on the right was cross keying with no primary change key. So we can see here that with this situation, when we do have a primary key, we simply put an X in front of the key symbol, and then we specify operated by. On this side, when we have a no primary key, we use the designation X1X or X2X, an X in front of and behind the numbers, and then we specify all the keys that will operate. So it's a slightly different way of labeling the situation, but we always come up with the term operated by, and then we list all the keys that will fit. Remember, nothing is taken for granted. We do not automatically have the master key or grand master key operate. You do have to specify that in your statement operated by. All right, so we have uh, talked about cross key. Now we want to get a little more specific. The, we want to look at what's known as controlled cross key. So controlled cross keying is when we take two or more keys under the same master key and have both of those keys operate a cylinder. So when you have multiple keys operating a cylinder, but those multiple keys come under the same master key in case, in this case, you can see that these two uh, change keys come under this master. That would be an example of controlled cross key. Now there's also a situation where we have uncontrolled cross keying. And here we can see that we have uh, this change key here and this one here operating another cylinder. So we have two different change keys, but they're coming from under two different master keys. So that's known as uncontrolled cross keying and that's even less desirable than controlled cross keying. It does tend to uh, reduce the number of combinations in a master key system and sometimes it introduces ghost or phantom keys that will work unexpectedly so that's one of the reason why you want to avoid uncontrolled cross key all right another type of cross keying is called maison keying so you can see on the left hand side of the building is an apartment uh the left side of the screen is an apartment building and the apartment uh, building has a main entry door so what we're going to do for convenience sake is we're going to have each of the individual tenant keys operate the front door. This means that the tenants will only have to carry one key. The key to their apartment will also open the front door. 
This is known as Maison keying. This is a French term, which means house keying. It's an indication that all of the keys will operate a particular door. In this case, it's going to be the front door. This is a, not a recommended practice. This uh, does affect the security. Remember, that's the entry door to the building. So a better option for Maison keying is to have tenants carry two keys, one key for their apartment and one key for the front door. An even better solution to that is to have tenants uh, carry some type of electronic access control credential. So you want to use electronic access control on that front door instead. And that way, if a tenant loses a key to the front door, you can quickly and easily deactivate that credential without taking anything apart without calling out a professional locksmith, for example, and you can quickly and easily deactivate that credential without affecting any of the other tenants. And you can quickly and easily reinstate security for that building. All right, so let's take a look at some examples here and see if we can figure out whether this uh, schematic is an example of controlled cross keying. And remember, controlled cross keying is where you have two or more change keys under the same master. Or is it uncontrolled cross keying where the individual change keys are coming from under two different master keys? Or is it Maison keying where all of the change keys under a master are going to operate? So let's take a look at this example here. We've got uh, three change keys that are operating under one master. So do you think that would be an example of controlled cross keying, uncontrolled, or Maison? All right, so if you said uh, controlled cross keying, you would be correct because of all these change keys, all three of these change keys come from under the same master. So that would be an example of controlled cross keying. Okay, how about this example? Here we have all of these change keys that come under a single master key operating in this cylinder. Do you think that's controlled, uncontrolled, or Maison? All right, so if you said it was uh, controlled cross keying, you would be correct. You would also be correct if you considered that to be Maison because you had all the change keys under a particular master keying operating. So Maison is really just another way or very specific type of controlled cross keying. Okay, let's take a look at this. All right, so we have a key from under this portion of the schematic and another change key from over here operating in a cylinder. So once again, is that controlled, uncontrolled, or Maison? All right, so if you considered that uncontrolled, you would be correct. And that's because those keys are coming from under two different areas of the schematic. You can think of it this way. It is actually crossing over in a horizontal direction. So if we're crossing over horizontally, where we're pulling the keys from, that would be an indication it's uncontrolled cross key. All right, so take a look at this example. We'll give you some kind of word problems here. So we've got a perimeter door now that is operated by AA1. So here it is. We've got a perimeter door that's operated by A1. All the mechanical rooms are operated by A2, All right? So once again, perimeter doors are operated by A1. Mechanical rooms are operated by A2. Uh, we've got one perimeter door that must also be operated by A2. So there's going to be one door in the group that's operated by A1 and A2. So we need to ask ourselves once again, is this an example of controlled, uncontrolled, or Maison keying? So once again, we've got one door that's going to be operated by change key A1 and A2. And by the way, the reason they're they're labeled with single letters is they're not coming under a master key, but these are actually symbols for change keys. So once again, we've got a door that's operated by an A1 change key and an A2 change key in addition to the grand master key. So once again, is that controlled, uncontrolled, or Maison? All right, so you've said it was controlled. You would be correct because both of these change keys are coming from underneath the same area of the keying schematic. All right, let's try another one here. We've got all the change keys under the AB master must operate a faculty restroom. So we're going to take all of these change keys under the AB master and we're going to have them operate the faculty restroom. So is that, once again, controlled, uncontrolled, or Maison? 
Okay, so if you said Maison, you would be correct. If you said controlled, you would be correct as well. Now, this is an example where we have a type of Maison keying uh, that is acceptable because this is being done on a non-security door. The restroom does not need a high level of security. So if you have multiple keys fitting a faculty restroom, that's okay. So that's an example where we have cross keying that is acceptable. Uh, except for the fact that it does, uh, that cylinder is going to get a lot of wear. When you cross key, you are going to be adding a lot of extra master pins in the cylinder. That could make the uh, cylinder a little bit more vulnerable to malfunction. Master pins might actually slip out as that cylinder gets extremely worn. Okay, let's take a look at another one. We've got AC1, AC1 right here, is a key for an entry suite. And we also want AC2 through AC5 to operate that suite door, okay? So we've got a suite door that's operated by change key AC1. We also want the AC2, 3, 4, and 5 to operate that door. So again, is that controlled, uncontrolled, or Maison? Okay, so if you said controlled cross keying, you would be correct. If you said it's a type of Maison keying, you would be correct because we, in effect, have all the change keys under a single master operating that sweet door. All right, so let's do another one here. We've got AA1 right here that is an operating uh, lab. And then we also want AB2 to operate the lab. So the lab is going to be operated by AA1 and AB1. So is that an example of controlled, uncontrolled, or Maison? All right, so if you said it's uncontrolled, you would be correct because we have two different change keys coming under two different master keys. So that's an example of uncontrolled cross keying. All right, now we've got a special situation here, and these are mailboxes used for an apartment building. Now, U.S. Postal Service regulations say that mass, uh, mailboxes rather cannot be master keyed. All right, uh, the postman in this particular case, there's probably an entry door behind uh, these mailboxes, so the postman would have access to all the mailboxes from the back side. So the post uh, postman doesn't have to have any type of master key for those mailbox locks. Now, there is a special cylinder that we can use. This is a full-size door hardware cylinder that will operate some brands of mailboxes. So with this type of cylinder, we can set the mailbox cylinder to the apartment entry key. Now, this is not master keying. We're simply keying alike the apartment door with the mailbox cylinder. Those will be operated on the same key. So that can be used uh, for mailboxes. This will reduce the number of keys that the tenants must carry. All right, another term to be familiar with is NMK, and that stands for not master keyed, not master keyed. So there will be no master key that operates the cylinder. So if we take a look at this, this is our three level system. We've got our AA1 change key here. We're gonna disassociate it from the master key system, uh, and we're going to indicate in parentheses NMK. So that would be a situation where we're not going to add any master pins to the cylinder. That cylinder will only be operated by the AA1 change key. The AA master and the A grand will not work. So those are doors where you need extra security. Uh, for example, you might have uh, some type of storage room where you don't want a floor master to operate. We also have another example, single keyed uh, cylinders, SKD, or sometimes called single keyed different. Single keyed means that there's only a single key that will operate the cylinder. There will be no master, no grandmaster, uh, no master pins in the cylinder. We only have bottom pins and top pins, and only one key would work. So these are labeled SKD, uh, and then a number follows. So you can have multiples of these. So you might have an SKD1 for the hospital pharmacy. You might have SKD2 for the IT department. So no other master keys will operate. Now you have to be careful of that because that would mean the building grand master key will not work. So in the event of an emergency, you've got to have access to those SKD keys. Those may have to be included in the keykeeper box at the front of the building so that the fire department has access. All right, so remember when you're working with master key uh, systems, you want to keep it as simple as possible. Only design it with the maximum number of levels that you need. 
Uh, it's been said that it does not take a genius to develop a complex master key system. The real genius comes in developing a master key system that is as simple as possible and still provides a level of safety, security, and convenience. We do have some additional resources for you to check out under the Allegiant.com US uh, training tab. There are some additional training courses for you to take. We also have some online training courses available. You can take those at your own pace. We also have a blog that we recommend. This is uh, done uh, by Allegiant by Lori Green, who is considered an expert in life safety codes related to door hardware. It's called idighardware.com. A lot of good case studies, a lot of good question and answers for you. If you have any questions regarding life safety codes and building hardware, that's the place you should go. If you have any technical questions regarding any of our, our products or any of our companies, whether it's Schlage, LCN, Von Duprin, or Steelcraft, call our customer care number. They will put you in touch with uh, technical services. So that's going to conclude this presentation. I do want to thank you for taking time to watch this presentation. We do have other presentations for you. We also have uh, webinars as well. And uh, going forward, we're going to have instructor-led training classes starting up again. So thank you once again for taking time to watch this presentation.